Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I want to hop on and tell you a little bit about my experience with the Michael Kors warranty process. But before I get started, I do want to say thank you to those of you who have subscribed. And if you haven't subscribed already, please consider doing so. I put out a lot of videos about contemporary designer handbags like Coach, Michael Kors, Fossil, Ferla, as well as some luxury items like Gucci, Burberry, and Goyard. So today I want to hop on and tell you about my experience um, getting this Whitney tote on the left side of the screen um, sent in for warranty through Michael Kors. It had a cracked strap, which I show in that picture there, and I was able to go through the warranty process. It took a little over a month and get um, a new bag out of the process. Um, so what I'm going to do today is I'm going to first show you some of the damage that was on my Michael Kors Whitney tote that prompted me to try to get a warranty repair. Um, and then I'm going to talk to you about the process of getting the warranty repair. And then at the end of the video, I'm going to talk about my feelings of the pros and cons of this process and whether I think it was a good process and I want, you know, I would recommend it. Um, so I was putting this bag away recently and I noticed that there was a little bit of cracking on the strap. So I just want to show you that kind of up close. Um, so the front is, like everything about the bag besides the strap is perfectly fine. Like the front straps are fine. There's really just nothing, um, no wear and tear on these, nothing wrong with them. But then when you look at the back, so it all seems fine up until you get right there. Um, so you can start to see there's a little bit of a crack right there and it looks little but then you look at the side and it's like the glazing is just completely coming apart um, in a way that makes me feel like this whole thing is gonna crack soon and not only that but I don't know can you see those cracks starting to form um, they're not forming on the other side I don't know how they're there honestly it looks like it got cut with something um, but I would never, like, I don't have scissors near my bag, I don't have a box cutter near my bag, so it's got to be cracking. Like, I don't, um, I don't think it could be anything else. So what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to take this bag, or I'm going to try to call Michael Kors and see if I can give this bag in for a warranty. So the first step after I realized that my bag had some damage was to call Michael Kors to ask about the warranty. If you go to their website, that's basically the step that they tell you to take first. Now this first step was actually pretty frustrating for me. Um, so I called them on my way to work in the car and um, the agent when I called seemed to be, I don't want to say hostile, but definitely unhelpful from the beginning of the call. So she asked if I had a receipt and so the first thing I told her was, oh I ordered online so I don't have a physical receipt but I could totally get it from my Macy's account. And she said, oh, so you don't have a receipt. Um, so that was a little bit frustrating because I had just told her I could get the receipt and then she told me I needed the style number from inside the bag, um, but uh, she kind of implied that the only reason she needed the style number was because I didn't have a receipt, which I didn't really understand, um, but because I was in the car, I, didn't, I, I couldn't um, get the style number. So she told me to call back, um, but you know, I had been on hold at this point for like 15 minutes before I called. So I was annoyed that she was asking me to call back at home when I have that information. So I asked her to tell me, you know, tell me exactly what you need from me so that I can be sure to have that information the next time I call Michael Kors. Um, and so then I think she started to realize I was getting annoyed. So she said she would just send me an email with all of the information that they needed. Um, and then I could just respond to that email on my own time. So the first kind of tip I would show tell you is um, definitely just try to email Michael Kors first. I went and I called first because I thought I would get a quicker response that way. But in reality, all she did was send me to the email channel anyway. So um, then after I got off the phone with her, she sent me this email. And this email is really helpful because it gives you basically all of the little things that you need to show Michael Kors in order to get the warranty process started. Um, you need the style number, the date of purchase. Now, the Michael Kors warranty is only a one-year warranty. I had purchased my bag in April um, on April 29th, 2019, so I was just within that one-year window. Um, but if your bag is older than one year, then I don't necessarily think you're going to qualify the, for the warranty process. Um, and then just showing a detailed description of the pro problem, um, telling them where you bought the bag, having pictures of the bag and the, the damage, 
and then a scanned copy of the receipt or a credit card statement as proof of purchase. So this is nice because, you know, if you bought the bag in store at like a Macy's, there's a good chance you don't have your receipt anymore. So you can provide your credit card statement or if these aren't available, then provide um, the four digit code on the plastic tag inside the product, which I'll show you a picture of that in, um, in a couple minutes and then tell them your contact information. So when I responded to this email, these are some of the pictures that I sh sent them when I responded to this email. Um, so first I show them the front and back of the bag. Obviously this bag is beautiful in pristine condition. Then I showed them pictures of the actual damage. So you can see here the damage on my bag was really focused on the strap like I showed you in that previous video clip. Um, I was pretty concerned because it looked like the strap had started cracking and even the glazing had a big kind of crack in it. Um, so I wanted to make sure that the pictures of this damage looked very clear and the people in warranty could see what I was talking about. So if you are going to do the warranty process, I would certainly spend some time making sure your pictures are in focus, are really zoomed in and can be really clear um, because eventually someone's going to need to look at this and know where to look on the bag once you send it in for the damage. And this is just another close-up of uh, the damage. You can start to see the crack again and I tried to zoom in as much as possible when I sent them this picture. The other pictures that I sent them are pictures of the inside tag on the bag. Now, when I was on the phone with Michael Kors, if you remember, the woman on the phone told me that I needed to have um, this style number that I could tell them um, because she you know, didn't really understand that I didn't have my receipt or she thought I didn't have my receipt, but I did actually have my receipt. So I sent these pictures of the interior tag anyway because I thought, you know, if they decided my Macy's receipt wasn't good enough, at least they would have these pictures already. So I just kind of was more conservative and sent them as many pictures as possible. So the first time I tried to send all of these pictures and all of this information in an email, the email actually bounced back and it was because of the size of the images. So I did have to send this in three separate emails, which I thought was kind of funny, but you can just see the emails I sent here. Um, I answered all of their questions. I made sure to tell them that I was sending multiple replies because I wanted the customer service agent who received the email to look through all of the emails I sent before like responding back that I sent them incomplete responses. And so that's so I, I, that's the information I sent them to get this process started. So three days later, um, I got a response that said um, I should ship them my bag um, and fill in the warranty form that they attached to the email. So what I needed to include in this was a completed uh, warranty form and then a copy of my receipt, which, you know, I had both of those, so it was no problem. This is the warranty form that they sent me. Um, I just want to show you so that you can uh, see kind of what information that you need to have available to you in order to start this warranty process. Um, so, you know, the form is pretty simple. The ticket number is just the number from their customer service system that's like at the top of your email. The rest is pretty self-explanatory, so it's not a particularly complicated form. But there is one important part of this form that I think you do need to pay attention to, and that is this statement right here. So what this statement is saying, this is on the warranty form and you have to sign this. What it's saying is that if they receive your bag um, and the item can't be repaired, they're going to send you a replacement bag um, like in a similar style. And you'll see what, what that means in, in a bit. But the thing is, is, is if they determine that your bag is damaged but can't be repaired, um, they're not going to return your original bag to you if you don't like any of the replacements that they're offering. So you are obligated to take one of the replacements that they offer, which is a little bit different than other kinds of warranty processes, which, um, you know, in some other warranty processes, you can just get a gift card instead of, you know, having to accept one replacement bag from a set list that they give you. So this is kind of a limitation that you do need to be aware of. If they decide that your bag is not damaged, they will return it to you. Now, this isn't costless, this warranty process. You do have to ship your bag to them on your own dime. They will not offer you a prepaid shipping label or anything like that. So I did have to figure out how to ship my bag to Michael Kors, and it's, it's, a, it's a large bag. It was a tote. Um, so the next clip is showing you how I kind of figured out how to ship it to them. Um, and then I will talk about uh, the next steps after I show you that. Um, the funny thing, of course, is that for shipping a tote, it's actually quite difficult to find a box that will fit it. Um, so 
these Home Depot moving boxes uh, actually fit a tote just perfectly. So if I put it in, I mean, I'm going to cover it better, um, but you can see that it just barely fits. Um, I'm going to cover it in bubble wrap and stuff, but uh, this will be how I ship it out to them. I'm sure it will be very expensive, so I will update you on how much it's going to cost. I'm thinking $20, $30 because um, this is a pretty big box and it isn't, you know, a pretty hefty bag. So, uh, wish her luck. She has a long journey ahead of her. On January 17th, I shipped the bag and it was going from the Chicago area to um, a city in New Jersey. And the bag was delivered on January 21st, um, so it only took three days to get there. I didn't hear anything from Michael Kors even though my bag was delivered, so five days later I emailed them and I told them, hey, my bag was delivered, here's the tracking number in case you need to see that it was delivered. I wanted to hear a response to make sure, you know, my bag didn't get lost in their processing or something. So the next day they did send a pretty quick response and they told me my item is unable to be repaired. Um, and so they sent me a list of possible replacement options. Now, this is pretty common. Um, my bag is not uh, in any current style, and um, repairing a bag probably means that you need access to the original materials of the bag, and perhaps, um, you know, a lot of Michael Kors um, manufacturing occurs overseas so maybe the US warranty center doesn't really have the means to do that and maybe you know it's just not worth it from a monetary perspective for them um, so they did send me a list of bags that could be possible replacements so um, this was this was where I started to get a little bit disappointed in the process. So the first thing that I was kind of disappointed at was that in this email they tell me that their selections are limited and they sell out quickly. So I need to tell them my preferred item, but I need to tell them two, um, two choices. So I need to tell them my first choice and then my second choice. Uh, so that was kind of disappointing to me because that meant I had little control over what bag I actually received. It was just kind of based on availability. And then even more uh, frustrating was that I had to tell them my preferences within two days. Um, so I didn't have time to go to a Michael Kors store and look at these different styles that they were offering me in person. I just had to make my decision based on what I could see in the replacement documents they sent me and then also any online information I could find. So I was feeling a little bit bad about this because it did feel kind of rushed and then I was also kind of unimpressed with the replacement bags that they offered me. So the way they offered these replacement bags is they basically sent me a PDF packet of a list of different bags with pictures of the bags like you see here and then some of the features or characteristics of the bag. Um, so this list is nice. It does have a lot of detail on it, but it doesn't have um, things like pictures of the bag on an actual person. It doesn't have the weight of the bag. So if you did, if you were interested in a bag, I, I did find that I had to go to the Michael Kors website to try to find more information about it. But because I couldn't like go into the store, I really had no sense of what these bags were going to be like. Uh, so you can see, you know, these the, uh, they sent me like a lot of bags to choose from, um, so I'm going to flip through and show you all of them. I was pretty unimpressed with the offerings because I felt like they were very different from the bag I sent in, and some of them were a lot lower quality, in my opinion, in terms of materials than what I sent in. So you can see like this Bedford Toad, I feel like it's an older style um, that I see on sale a lot, so I was kind of unimpressed. That's not to say that everything they offered me was bad. Now you can see on this page I do have some coated canvas options, but there are also some leather bags that they offered. And um, one thing you'll notice is that while the pictures are these bright colors, they're actually offering these bags in many different colors. Um, so black, brandy, soft pink, luggage, admiral, you know. So you, um, even though the pictures show a certain type of bag, you could actually get a completely different one and they're offering that to you as well. Um, this page is like a really good example of why I was disappointed. Um, <laughs> some of these bags are just so different in style than what I sent in. I sent in a beautiful smooth leather quilted bag and and I you know I'm offered these like kind of gaudy Hamilton bags one in a full coated canvas but they have like really gaudy hardware just not my style at all and then another thing I was offered was this Kelsey nylon tote which is um, nylon and polyurethane so fake leather so no leather at all. So, you know, this set was kind of disappointing. Same thing here. I think it goes without saying that these are just not my style at all.
towards the end of the packet, it started to get a bit better. Um, these are, you know, nice and pretty bags and uh, they are newer styles. So I was pretty impressed with this because um, this Mercer pocket tote was, it was on sale at Michael Kors. So um, I was um, hoping that I would get a newer style, but these were already kind of discounted, but they were still $170 plus. So they were like high value bags, even when they're on sale. Now here are more bag options. So they offered me mostly totes because I sent in a tote um, to the warranty process. So they're gonna give me a, a, a tote in exchange. But I was really excited to see this Mercer um, medium accordion tote because it is a, you know, a full grain pebble leathered bag. It looks very nice and it's also a bit smaller. So it could work as a handbag instead of having to be a tote because I really didn't feel like I needed to add more totes to my collection. Um, one thing I will say is that this Mercer medium accordion tote, the measurements that are listed here for it didn't match what the measurements for a medium accordion tote were on Michael Kors website. So I don't know if that's because because um, these measurements are wrong or if it's because this is an older style of the bag that had different measurements and you know it got changed and updated. So I did need to double check that I understood exactly which bag I was getting even when I compared them to the Michael Kors website. Here are some more options, um, more Bedford totes, <laughs> uh, but you know you know, there's some options here. Uh, they're nice bags, but they just weren't interesting to me. I really love the quilting detail on my Whitney tote, and, you know, this was nothing like that. More options here. Um, a lot of these bags are bags you can constantly see um, on sale at places like Macy's. So again, um, nothing super exciting. More options here. So ultimately, I told them that I wanted two, two selections. So the first thing I wanted was the Mercer Medium According Tote in Brandy, which is pictured here. Um, but my second choice, if that wasn't available, would be this Mercer Large Pocket Tote, which, as you guys know, is the bag that I ended up getting if you've seen my unboxing. Now, I really, really, really didn't like this, having to specify a second choice, because it just feels like a gamble, you know? It's like you don't even know what bag you're going to get, and you sent in this relatively expensive tote for a warranty process, and then you just kind of have a luck of the draw on what you receive in return. So it took two days to get a response from them, um, and they basically just told me, okay, Okay, we got your selection. Now at this point, like I told you, I was pretty frustrated that I was basically entering a lottery to, you know, get one of these two bags that I said. So I was getting pretty anxious. So I responded and I asked, you know, do you have a timeline for how long it'll take to get verification of availability, meaning telling me whether I'm getting the Mercer Medium Accordion Tote or the Mercer Pocket Tote. And they basically just said three to five business days. Um, so I was like a little bit frustrated um, because I was getting very anxious about which bag I would receive. So then weirdly, um, that same day, I got an email from them that, you know, said to restart the warranty process. This ended up just being a mistake. And, you know, I asked them, hey, is this a mistake? And they're like, yeah, sorry, this is a mistake. But I was like pretty frustrated because I was so on edge about this replacement bag. Um, and I ended up getting this like false alarm email. So finally, I got a response from them that told me that they were placing an order for a Mercer large pebbled leather pocket tote bag for me. Now, this was disappointing news to me because if you remember, uh, three days before this, I had said my first choice was the medium accordion tote but apparently that one was not available or was never a real option, who knows? So I got my second choice, um, which was quite a bummer. 
So in that email where they told me what bag they ordered me, they gave me an order number, but that order number wasn't able to, like I couldn't look up the order on the Michael Kors website. And at this point I was feeling pretty um, like anxious or frustrated because I didn't even know if I would like this bag. I went into the Michael Kors store that weekend to try to look at it, um, to get a sense of whether I would like it. And nobody had it in stock. I could never see that particular size of bag. So I just really wanted to know when I would get the bag um, so that I could see it in person and see if I liked it. Here they just told me that the uh, time frame for delivery of my tote was two to three weeks, which is um, a long time, um, but they didn't really give me any information on how I could follow my order status because like, like I said, the order number they gave me didn't work on the Michael Kors website. So finally, on February 11th, which was a little over one month after I started this process, I got a, USP, a UPS notification, because I'm a UPS My Choice member, of a shipping label that was created to be sent to my address. Um, I hadn't received any response from Michael Kors telling me that my bag had shipped, um, but I did receive this notification, so I knew it was on its way. So finally, on February 12th, I did get my replacement bag, which I'm showing you here. It was this Mercer Large Pocket Tote. Now, it's a really beautiful bag. You can see that the grain of the leather is beautiful. It was a fully leather-lined bag. It was, it was a gorgeous, gorgeous bag. But ultimately, I just didn't like the bag. It was too heavy for me. Um, I'm going to post a video, or no, I already posted a video that shows you um, how I felt about the bag and some of the cons of the bag. Um, but, you know, it was a beautiful bag. I did get a replacement, but it, it ultimately didn't work for me. So now I want to go over the pros and cons of this warranty process. So some of the pros of this process are that it was a relatively quick warranty process, a little over a month. Um, some people who do the warranty process through like Louis Vuitton or something, it takes months and months to get their bags sent to France and, and brought back. Um, so this was a relatively quick turnaround, even if I was impatient during the process. Um, there were also no issues with Michael Kors like blaming me for the crack. I was kind of worried they would say, hey, it looks like you like damaged your bag and it's not, um, not a defect and so we're not going to replace it. No issues with that. Um, I did receive a brand new bag, which is a huge pro, and the sales price of that bag um, was around $170, and that was more than what I paid for my Whitney tote, so I did get a bag um, of slightly greater value, and I did um, end up selling the bag um, just recently to recoup most of my costs on my Whitney tote. I sold it for $125, so um, ultimately I wasn't out really that much money. It was $10, um, or a $14 loss for the sale, and then also the the $12 for shipping the bag. There were some cons in the process. Um, the first was kind of idiosyncratic to me and the customer service agents that I got, but I, you know, my first phone call, like I said, was inefficient. The customer service agent was snarky and I didn't really have any information online that told me what I needed to have prepared before calling because that was, that would have saved me some time if I knew that I needed like my receipt or my item number or anything like that. Um, another con is really, I think that you only ever get replacement. I don't really see Michael Kors ever repairing a bag unless it's like a hardware issue that's easy to repair. Um, so that does mean that if you have some kind of sentimental value attached to your bag, I don't necessarily know that you're ever going to be able to get it repaired by Michael Kors. You might need to go to a cobbler or something if you want to keep that particular bag. Um, another con is I really didn't love the list of replacement bags. I thought it was lackluster. I thought I was, um, I was a little frustrated that I was limited to only, um, only totes. You know, other, other companies, if they have a defect in their bag, they will give you just a gift card for the price that you paid for the bag. And I was really hoping that would be the outcome. Um, some people on the purse forum said that that's the outcome that they had. Um, and I would have liked to be able to pick my own bag with a gift card instead of having to pick from this list of bags that honestly felt like it was like last season bags or bags they had extra quantities of or something. Um, and then, you know, the other thing I really didn't like is that there was just this gamble, this lottery over what bag you're going to get in return, um, which I thought was uh, pretty frustrating and caused me to be a little bit anxious. So all in all, you know, would I recommend you go through this process? I mean, I think it had a lot of pros. I think there are very few companies in the world that will stand behind their products like this and just give you an entirely new product in exchange um, for a damaged one. Um, I will say I was, you know, mostly the biggest frustration for me was that I had very little control over which bag I got in as, as a replacement for my Michael Kors Whitney tote. Um, but if you're okay with that kind of uncertainty, then yeah, I would definitely recommend you go through this process. I think all in all, it was relatively easy, relatively quick, um, and I did end up getting a nice bag in exchange. So... 
Thanks guys for watching. Let me know in the comments below if you have any questions, if you've gone through this process and had a different experience. Um, but I will see you next time. Bye.